Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another show on Exorcise Your Rights. I'm here with Alex Davis, who is a writer, a lecturer, and an events organizer based out of Derby, UK, so a little bit international today. He's been an associate lecturer for both creative writing and film and media at the University of Derby over the last five years, but he's probably best known as a creator and coordinator of the in-person and online genre fiction events. Over the last 20 years, he's been a part of teams chairing FantasyCon and ChillerCon, and is the originator of Edgelit Festival, uh, of, excuse me if I could speak, the Edgelit Festival. Festival. <laughs> this does not bode well for today. Doesn't bode well for does it? You know? <laughs> the festival, not the festival. Um, that's a completely different event that we don't want to talk about here. Uh, and he's an organizer of the UK Ghost Story Festival. Uh, which is where I met you. So welcome mm -hmm. to the show, Alex. I'm all excited that you, you are literally the most important component of a writer's life because you're an organizer. <laughs> yes, thank you, Angela. Well, not many people say that, so thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure there's many, many other people that writers would uh, would call upon first. But it's nice to have a role in giving writers a platform and a chance to, to get themselves out there. And uh, it's a very exciting life. It's a lovely thing to be to be able to do. So, yeah, do uh, do take great pleasure in it. Awesome. Well, and especially since 2020, I mean, I don't want to go on the whole, you know, everything that happened. We don't need the, the flashbacks. But before 2020, doing anything online was considered not real. And now all our perceptions have changed. And this is the primary source of how we get together, I think. Virtual events have skyrocketed. Oh, yeah, yeah, very much so, very much so. And I, I think, um, to be honest, initially, I was a bit kind of wary of the idea, just because I'm a bit of a tech, I am a bit of a technophobe. And B, I kind of tend to take time to warm up to an idea. So I'll sort of think of something and then sort of look at it from every possible angle over the course of about six months and then say, yes, let's do that. I think that was where I was with online events, sort of thinking, feels like that could be a good idea, but I want to make sure I know what I'm doing and the way I want to approach it. To be honest, a lot of it came out of university because we had to switch, obviously, from in-class lessons to online lessons, which was a bit of a jolt for everyone. I don't think many people had had a lot of experience in it at all. Um, by the time I'd done a few lessons there, I thought, yeah, that really kind of cemented my, yeah, I can do this and I want to do this. And I probably do, honestly, these days more online than I do than I do face to face. So um, it has been a big shift, but I think it's been, it's been a lot of fun for me as well. And, and one of the things I love, you talk about being international. I mean, I, I, it's so wild to be running an event or giving a workshop and you've got people from obviously America, Canada, Australia, all over Europe. It's, it's absolutely wild to think uh, that people are gathered there from so many places in that one virtual room. So that's one of the things that I do love. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, one of the, the key things for me was when it first started happening, I was a little bit like you, but I am more impulsive. So I was kind of like, I don't know, let's just jump in and see what happens. Uh, but after kind of getting into it and figuring out things like, oh, lighting and, you know, all that, um, I started realizing this is perfect for introverts because I I am an introvert. I do love people, but, you know, the batteries just need to be recharged. Mm -hmm. But this allows introverts to come and socialize on a regular yeah. basis, attend these events. Financially, they're cheaper. So they people that with, you know, not being able to travel, mobility mm -hmm. challenged people can come. Um, people, you know, if you're blind, you can listen. If you, you know, you can have all your tools. It's just so much more accessible than in-person events. So I'm kind of a big fan, like where at first I was a little bit, Ooh, you know, no, how's this gonna, how is this going to work since they're not real? And now it's like, oh, this is better. <laughs> Yeah, I think it is for a lot of people. And I, and I think equally, we sort of forget it's not one or the other. Like a lot of people will go to an online event as yeah. well as an in-person event. And, um, you know, if I'm looking at an event thinking, you know, there might be certain events I'd love to get to, but I can't get mm. to where they are. It could be, you know, anywhere up in the country, somewhere else in the world. And you think, oh, I just can't. There's no way for me to get to that. But yeah. um, I'll go to plenty of local events and the things that I can get to sort of reasonably. Um, mm. but again, that doesn't sort of preclude me doing online events events either um yeah. I, like to, I like that point about i think a lot of writers are introverts i think sort of by nature so um and i find that when, when you get a group in a room together doing an online event because some people are very active and they really want to be involved and they're on the chat and they're really jumping in and there's other people who are sort of a bit quieter it's like i know, sort of i can see your name on the list but i've not heard anything yeah. from you like, which is absolutely fine if you want to sit there and just listen and take it all in then then great but i do think it does yeah it does suit um 
those writers who are that bit more introverted, um, as you say. And I think it's that accessibility thing is great. I had so many people say that to me. It's actually like, I, I can't sort of, I'm not able to get to an event, but actually this sort of thing has been has been great. And I think for me, there was a real worry I had from, from quite a few people saying, I really hope this doesn't drop off. Actually, I hope this doesn't kind of go away. And um, I'll, I'll touch touch wood as I say, you know, hopefully. Uh, but I've not noticed the kind of drop off, you know, in, in the kind of um, audiences and the, you know, the, the desire for online events. I don't think that at my end, at least, Mm -hmm. that has gone away so i'm sort of hoping you know long may continue i, I really like doing yeah. them and i think once you kind of conquer your technical fears it's it's all it's all good to go yeah i agree with you i mean i noticed this last convention circuit all the big ones are on they're all virtual now i don't i don't yeah. think anybody was only physical um which yeah. is a huge change from what two or three years ago yeah and like you say it can it can be both you know it can be yeah in person then you're recording yeah. you're streaming all, all those if you've got the capacity and the the platform to do it you know i just think mm -hmm. i would encourage anyone to to think about if you're out there thinking i'd love to do an event i often yeah. say to people online event is a great way to start because you're not thinking mm -hmm. where am i going to host it i've got to pay the venue i've got to pay this i've got to pay that actually for an online event you get your platform, you get your, your Zoom or I use Google Meet or whatever platform you wish to use for your events. Plenty out there. Um, you line it all up. And I think risk wise, like as an events organizer, the, the risk is, is so minimal. And I think mm. one of the things I've loved about it as an organizer, I've probably done things online that I wouldn't have thought well, I'll do that in person. So I thought, is that a bit niche? Is that a bit of a risk? Is that a bit of a chancy event to put on? And will people want to kind of come along? online it's yeah that risk is so so much less so i think it's really encouraged a lot of certainly for me personally a lot of experimentation you know just mm -hmm. I'll, I'll try something different and um some of those have really stuck which has been lovely not everything has stuck and that's the nature of experimentation but i do think you know I, I feel a lot more free to just let's do this thing you know i don't have to yeah. think about some of those kind of key elements when you're putting together a physical event yeah go by the wayside yeah, I agree with you. And, and I think one of the one of the beautiful things as well is <clears throat> when you're presenting, you don't have the empty room fear because yeah. we we just I did an event recently. And for some reason, zero people showed up. There was not there was no reason. But maybe everybody's power was off in um, the United States, which was the primary audience that mm. that weekend. But mm. then later we get the views. You know what I mean? So nobody attended yeah. the, the live. But can you imagine being, you know, you do an in-person event and the room is empty, you're canceling it. You're, you're just not yeah. going to do yeah. it. Yeah. But it didn't matter because we're recording for the future. We're recording for posterity. And then, yeah, we got the views later. So, so yeah. and nobody knew. So we didn't have to have that. Well, I knew because I was looking at the viewer count going, oh, geez, <laughs> did I not advertise this? <laughs> but... Also, no stress. So I, I love that as well. Have you found anything like that with like your presenters that they're more relaxed after you do get over the technical thing? Yeah, I think I mean, the thing I find, I think presenting is very different. I think that's something again, like I say, teaching at university, the whole I think the whole place had to kind of learn very quickly if they hadn't done it before. Um, I, I really like it, but I do think there is a different kind of pace of things. I often sort of say to with like for workshops in particular, I think that's very different. So if I'm doing an in-person in, in, in workshop, I might mm -hmm. say to people, take 20 minutes to do this task. And you sort of, we'll sort of sit there for 20 minutes and I'll wander around the room and check how everyone's going. I think if you're online, I think sort of 20 minutes of me just kind of staring at the camera would sort of remind everyone of scanners or something. Just, you know, that's kind of, you know, yeah. sort of, so I'll always sort of think, well, let's sort of do like five minutes. Then we'll come back and have a group discussion. Yeah. So the, the structure, I think the structure of things is different. I think that may be sometimes mm -hmm. what, people worry about I think it's partly the technical but it's also well what's it like doing online and you know you can't have people piping in or sort of you know sticking a hand up at the back of the class you know it's kind of getting used to the idea of the chat and sort of how you manage that and mm -hmm. um, one of the great things about as I said doing at university was the chat was so lively the chat was like so energetic and <laughs> it was a really good way to get used to i've got to keep an eye on this chat box it's very yeah very busy uh which which was nice and um yeah i think it's just that it's a different style of doing things i think that maybe mm. just takes a little bit of getting used to yeah yeah and speaking of the chat i think one of the beautiful things about doing online events and this is like where everybody's like are you saying you should never do a per in-person event absolutely not 
<laughs> in person. I am so excited to go to physical StokerCon next year. I had to miss it this year because we're waiting on our visa in Brazil. Um, so it was wonderful to have the online option. Uh, but one of the things that's really nice about online versus uh, physical, I think this is like my key thing, is when you are in chat, you know, like if you're in person, you're like, oh, yeah, you're a writer. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you about my book. And then you you separate your ways. And I guarantee that person has forgotten everything you said when they're on the bus. But when you're sitting there in chat, you're like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. blah. Here's my book. Link. Mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so we can actually give each other the information directly mm. where you can't do that in person. It's a big difference. I think the other thing I always find as well is I'm I'm in the habit now, and I think a lot of people have, have been doing this kind of as standard, but just to record everything. Mm -hmm. So actually, if you can't be there, you can watch it back. If you miss yeah. anything or you want to catch something in the chat you didn't quite catch on to, you can watch it back. I think a lot of people just, I always say, I think I've noticed some people doing it in physical workshops and they're sort of sitting sort of frantically taking notes. And I always think, must be hard to kind of be taking notes and also sort of taking everything in. So I like the recording thing. So that she just you mm -hmm. can just listen and just kind of take it all in and then watch it back if you want to pick up on particular details. Um, but no, yeah, I do. I do like that uh, that chat capacity. I must be one of my teething problems initially was I I hadn't figured out how to shrink down a slideshow. That first three or four sessions I did, I was sort of like I've got this full screen slideshow. I'm thinking. I know people are asking me stuff in the chat bar. I can't deal with it right now. And uh, until someone pointed out to me, I could um, customize my slideshow. I was like, oh, great. That's a world of difference. So I can now I have my slideshow and I have my chat bar down the side and everything's, you know, everything's rosy. But um, oh, that's yeah, awesome. bit, of a, bit of a technical teething issue at first. But uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think that there have been so many. I look back at the first video b before any of this and it was just a, uh, everything had shut down and we were trying to have a book release for something. I mean, I was one of the authors, so the publisher decided to do this online book release thing. Um, I look back at my video, so nervous. I'm in the dark. You can't really see me because who had lighting back then? You well, know, yeah. the video quality is horrific because yeah. I didn't have a webcam, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was all so awkward. And then I looked at, like, flash forward now, all of those authors who've done other things, and we're all just like, Oh yeah, you know, doing this and oh, let me get all my lights on. Oh, my background, yeah. let me do this. And you know, mm -hmm. it's just a huge difference, like how yeah. much we've progressed. And so and many we're people in the now. And yeah. This is the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So many people are now they're they're so accustomed to it. I think it's again that then the scene of online events is again itself is really is really lively. Mm. So um and it's great. I mean, I've found you know a lot of people I've kind of got to do something for the first time and sort of get this sort of slight yeah. sort of waver when i first asked i said no give it a go it's really cool it'd be great you know i'm on hand the whole time you know it'll be you yeah and people do seem to really enjoy it once they kind of push past that barrier i've always found mm -hmm. that most people who've done it once said oh, i'd love to do it again so i do think there is you know once you've you just got to bite the bullet and kind of embrace the idea i think um yeah and that's the only way to do that really is just to, to, to give it a whirl i think yeah i agree well you've done physical and I'm well, I'm going to say you do physical and online events. Yeah. What are some of the challenges with that? Because like I've hosted like a few poetry events. I do this little show. I cannot, it's like herding cats sometimes. I can't imagine doing it with on the scale that you do it. Mm, <laughs> so the, respect, but also oh, what's your secret? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th I think to me, I, I think a huge amount of it just comes down to small details. I think you know there's so much. There's so much to think of and so many kind of smaller points. And for me, when I first started doing events, and I would definitely would sort of suggest this to anyone, um, all my first experience with vol was volunteering. I was just kind of, and a lot of that is not glamorous. A lot of that is just kind of you're sort of stuffing goodie bags and laying chairs out. And, but you are sort of going to look sort of behind the curtains. So actually, but this is kind of how it, like, if I get there three hours before the event, like, what's going on? You know, and then if you can start to kind of get on to... Uh, a committee, even as a, uh, you know, a convention committee, even in a small role, you get that sense of, okay, well, I'm starting to see how this thing sort of takes shape. Um, so that's been a really big thing for me. It's great for me now. I'm sort of getting to a, a vintage where people who volunteered for me are now going on to do their own things. And it's really sort of lovely to see that progression. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's a big, a big thing I would always suggest. I think also it's just, I think the timeline is the biggest thing. And I think you can sort of have in your head, this is the stuff that I need to do. 
But I think it's the biggest thing is what happens when and what needs to be done when. You know, when do you announce the event? When do you start kind of announcing the speakers? When do your tickets go on sale? When you need to be contacting all the authors to sort all the arrangements? You got if you got hotels and travel, it's a whole another layer of admin if you're working with publishers, making sure your publishers are happy with all the arrangements. So it's just a lot of very, very small details. There's a lot of spreadsheets. There's an awful lot of spreadsheets that I have on the go for any particular event. I suppose if anyone's thinking about it, the two bits of advice I would give, and I think I always say this to anyone thinking about events, is firstly, find your venue. Got to have the right kind of venue. It's no good putting on if the venue's not quite right. Where is it going to be? What's the venue going to cost? What facilities have they got? Um, the studies say the biggest thing people look for in a venue is the toilets, which is ridiculous. We're kind of like you think you've put all the time organizing an event and people are going to be talking about the toilets, but that is a thing that like the toilets are such a big part of what people think of an event. Yeah. Um, <laughs> weirdly. I never um, thought of that, but yeah, you're, you're right. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you go somewhere and say, well, the event was great, but the toilets are horrible. It's not a good impression. Um, but also um, the budget side of it. I think that's where I always say to people again, to just to be, very realistic i think you know it's very easy to say to yourself i think this event will attract you know, 500 people it's not easy to attract 500 people it's not to, to anything you know it's really hard to kind of rustle up um you know as, as you say you know you, you've I've, I've done readings at events where you've had sort of you're struggling to get 10 20 people and that's kind of fine in of itself in certain contexts but um you just can't guarantee numbers i think the thing i always say to anyone is kind of budget to sell about a third or a half of what you'd like and that's probably about realistic. And I think that's the thing I always mm -hmm. say to anyone wanting to an event is just don't get yourself in too deep, whatever you do. You know, if, if I would downscale it before I sort of thought I'm taking a big financial sort of risk on this, because there's, there's really, unless you're working with an organization or something, there's no way to kind of mitigate that risk. That risk is, is on you. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got to kind of have a good vibe of, yeah, if I'm laying out, you know, hundreds of pounds or thousands of pounds or dollars or whatever it might be, you've got the confidence that I think this will work. You know, I'm, I'm pretty confident mm. this will work and I feel like there's a market for it. Um, so I think those are things. But until you've got a venue and you've got a budget that works, you kind of haven't got anything really. Um, right. So, yeah, and I think the last thing I would always say is kind of, I think a lot is in sort of, for me, it's about the impression that, that you give as an event. I think it's all that kind of like people feeling like they're in safe hands. So if you arrive at a convention, say, and, you know, you get there at opening time and there's no one on the desk and there's just this impression of absolute chaos and you just think that's not immediately you think, am I in safe hands here? Like, is this thing going to be a mess? And it might be a great lineup of talent and all those things, but people want to feel like, yeah, this thing's going to go smoothly. like that, And that starts mm. the, the minute they walk in the building. So um, I don't like people to see any of the seams. Like when that door opens, I just want it to be like, right, everything's where it should be all the signposts are on the wall, all the people are at their station where they're meant to be, you come and get your goodie bag and we're off and running. And that, that to me is, I think is a big thing. People feel immediately, oh, I'm, I'm sort of secure, for a better word for it. I'm sort of yeah. safe in this, in the knowledge that the people behind this do do know what they're doing. Um, yeah. I've got those things can go wrong, but I think that impression of, you know, it, everything's going well, I think is really important. Um, that makes a big difference to an audience for sure. Yeah. I'm picturing like as as I have volunteered to some of these events, I'm picturing like the person walking in the door going, oh, this is nice. But behind the scenes, I guarantee there's probably 10 people going, oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. And I, think, I think it's one of the lessons I, I learned quite early on, like first kind of events I did. And it was like the smallest things you couldn't have like, you know uh, thought. And I was like really kicking myself around like these tiny little things had gone wrong. And I just then I sort of third time I did it, I thought, well, actually, no one sees it. You know, so that's, that's the thing. If the audience kind of doesn't see what's gone awry, or you can cover it in some way, then, you know, it's sort of it's neither here or there um, yeah. in, in so many regards. So I think, again, it's just to let those things go. I'm not the best advocate for that, probably the best kind of example of that, maybe. But, um, you know, I think if you can say, actually, well, I can see the audience here having a really good time and everyone's enjoying themselves mm -hmm. and we're not getting you know, stacks of complaints, then, you, you know, we're, we're, we're all good. And, um, yeah. and to be honest with you, I, I do find even if things somewhere along the line do go a bit wrong, then I think people are pretty forgiving on the whole. And, and again, there are times it's just out of your hands. There's times it's just like, you know, I've had, I've had phone calls from 
authors on the morning of the event and something's happened and they can't make it along. It's absolutely yeah, it's not life happens. It's not, it's not their fault. It's not our fault. It's just life circumstances. So you sort of adjust on the fly and think, oh, well, that person can't do that. Can I rope someone else in? You sort of grabbing someone the minute you arrive to go, oh, hey, do you mind jumping on this panel and all that sort of stuff? Um, is, is But I do think on the whole, yeah, audiences are pretty sort of, they just, they want to be there and enjoy it. And I think, you know, um, mm -hmm. Don't worry so much about those those small things as 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 organisers do, or certainly as I do, at the least. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will say the UK ghost uh, ghost hunt. What was it called again? The UK, the ghost, ghost, UK ghost, ghost Story Festival. Ghost yeah. Story Festival. I know there's no hunting involved. That's no me. hunting. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> we stay clear of that. You know, we can. Uh, there's yeah. plenty of people doing hunts, then that's great. But yeah, we. Yeah, we're, yeah. Um, no ghost hunting, but the Ghost Story Festival was awesome. That was such a pleasant experience. I presented and watched uh, different things, and that was wonderful. You did such a good job with that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a real, it's always been a real passion of mine. It's one of those events I sort of had like in my, I'm going to do this one day. And I sort of managed to rustle up a place to do it. And um, yeah, it was a real, it was a real, uh, real pleasure. And it was a bit after a bit of a break, actually. I, I sort of, I, I was. There was, I mean, I will say there was a point I, I've said to a lot of it was kind of evented out after a certain point. And I just I think I just needed a bit of time, just take a bit of a reset and kind of that's, you know, sort of think about what we're doing. And um, I got sort of tempted back to do another Ghost Story Festival the, the year love uh, earlier this year, in fact, of course, wasn't it? Um, oh, and I was really glad I did. I was really glad I got tempted back in. I was I, was, I really, really enjoyed the whole experience. As a favourite patch of writing of mine, it's one that I really, really love. I uh, love to read ghost stories and... I think in events terms, it sort of really fast uh, operates in a kind of fascinating space because mm. you you'll know as well as I do. I'm sure many of you, your listeners, will. Sometimes you say the word horror and people go a bit kind of oh, you know, not that's not oh, that's not the kind of gruesome stuff. Yeah, and, you know, no, I don't like been, chainsaw murders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you you do some. I think, but but when you talk about ghost stories, I think ghost stories have this more sort of universal interest. I think more people are mm -hmm. you know, if they if they are not familiar with you know. The, the the big names in horror in the genre they're familiar with them are james they're familiar with you know the charles dickens they're familiar with the christmas yeah. carol you know they might be familiar with the woman in black and you know there'll be ghost story it's sort of like a point of contact there almost yeah. so we do get a really interesting kind of there's a lot of kind of people i've seen around that horror events and i know from that scene and there's always a few people who think oh hey you're new how cool like, welcome you know come and join us you know we'll do some ghost stories and it's i think it has a kind of literary appeal as well, mm -hmm. that I think is is really interesting. And you you go into a bookshop, you know, you'll find most of the ghost stories will probably be in in like general fiction than in the horror mm -hmm. section. I guess matter yeah. that lot do get kind of ported into um, the, the general fiction. So I think it, yeah, definitely from that event angle, it's really interesting to see that kind of mix of people yeah. all, all together. And, it, and one thing I loved yeah. about this year in particular was like the knowledge of that audience is amazing. Like they, they all get together and they're able to have these conversations. I distinctly remember sitting, uh, Michelle Paver was one of our headliners. And she was talking about the ghost story writers that she loved. And she said, oh, I don't think anyone would have heard of these people, but yeah, has anyone heard of, and I can't even remember who they were. Like I, I was the few, I was like, I, I don't know who that is, you know, yeah. uh, but some very kind of uh, old school sort of Victorian ghost story writers. And there was a good like portion of hands up. And she was like, wow, like, you guys really know your stuff. And that was like, such a lovely moment. There. So <laughs> Michelle Pay was the very, you guys really know your stuff. That's lovely. Awesome. Yeah. So it, there is, yeah, it's a real, it's something there's real passion for. I think that to me is what makes it exciting. Um, and Derby is, is allegedly or apparently is the most haunted city in the UK. Um, there's a few other places. Again, I think it's a bit of a debate, but I think you can sort of sensibly say that without too much kind of, uh, contention or controversy a lot of very kind of so on the marketing front that's good as well you can sort of say come to the most haunted city for the ghost story festival yeah we'll dovetails together really nicely well that just went on my list of places i need to visit <laughs> and i think <laughs> well, i was yeah. saying it wrong then you say derby i was saying derby, I think yeah. derby. <laughs> no, it's fine it's fine i think it is i don't i think we usually say derby over here but I don't, yeah it's uh, yeah not a problem so say it like alex says it he he's the expert on this <laughs> not like me. i barely speak english some days i feel like <laughs> um so that's i like that 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 concept of uh ghost stories kind of almost being like gateway horror like <laughs> oh no come here it's just a ghost story it's okay it's story. and it's then okay. yeah and then you slip them into the rest of it <laughs> yeah it's, it's so true so because i think i think the thing is i think 
I mean, uh, in the UK, I can't, I can't necessarily talk for everywhere else, but we had a sort of, uh, so again, I'm sure many listeners were heard of the video nasty era and kind of in the eighties, there were lots of sort of you videos banned in UK video shops and um, people were getting arrested for distributing these, these films and things. And I think I, I always have in my mind that I think a lot of people think, think that when they think of horror in, in, in out in the UK, they think of like nasty and exploitative and, you know, there is an end of mm-hmm. horror that is more gruesome and explicit. And I, I think there's a place for that. I'm not, you know, I'm, mm-hmm. a, I'm a fan of sort of extreme horror as well as sort of ghost stories, and something a bit subtler. But I do think you're not going to sort of go away thinking, oh, I was really, that's really upset me or kind of mm-hmm. disturbed me. I think, you know, ghost story, you would go away thinking that was like chilling or sort of it was a thrill yeah. to listen to. And I do think, yeah, it does appeal to a different sort of sensibility um in in some way but yeah i do think you could sort of go i mean i would sort of suggest someone if you like ghost stories maybe you could go kind of down folk horror and you're kind of in a similar it's a bit more mm. heavy maybe you're getting a bit more kind of you know blood and sex and sacrifice and stuff and you get into folk horror and then you can sort of go that bit further um but yeah it's it's fascinating where people find their kind of access points you know i do think mm-hmm. it's really a really interesting thing i do think i think ghost stories can be you know one of those sort of starting points um I sometimes kind of compare kind of getting into horror it's kind of if you're sort of trying to eat spicy food so i'm not mm. going to start you off with the carolina reaper you know so i'm not going to start i'll start you off with something a little bit milder build up yeah. your tolerance and then maybe you can sort of escalate Have half a jalapeno <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's just escalation you so what can what can mm. and then you saw sort of what and it's about what you can handle i think that's also part of the equation is you know a lot of people are there are people who just don't like horror and then will never like horror just because of mm-hmm. the emotional mm-hmm experience yeah. psychological experience which they is have horror, okay like, yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah I think even horror fans will have a point where they go i don't want to go past there that's like that's the point where i go that's sort of the horror i don't yeah want i think that to me is again everyone has their kind of point where they say i don't really want to i mean I'm, I'm, I'm quite a big fan of the saw films and people again this is a series people kind of go oh you know don't really like that and it's kind of well you know i, I get i get why you wouldn't but i do think there's some interesting mm-hmm. stuff happens in the series as a whole but you'll find that point where you go that's where i sort of check out you know <laughs> individually yeah. um as a horror fan i'm one of the animal people i'm okay with everything happening but did a dog die did, I mean, the cow oh, yeah. I uh, saw I saw something. There was the, the cow that got, and I've never seen the Saw movies because there was a cow being chopped up in one of the, the I think like a trailer or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying and to remember. I was like, that, been, and that might have been Jigsaw. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe that. Yeah, I remember seeing the cow and going, "Nope, can't watch it." <laughs> no, honestly, it's so true. It's so true. We do, we, we do that in film, honestly. Like you know, my yeah. my, my my um one of my the first times I cried in watching the film was um was turner and hooch the, the the tom hanks film with where he's yeah. with the dog and the dog uh, spoiler alert the dog dies at the end i'm sure most of the people know that i'll never I was watch like, it i was mm. a bit i would seen k9 about a week before so i was like oh the dog will be okay the dog will be okay it's my my young mm-hmm. mind's like, dog will be fine it was fine in k9 the dog dies in turner and hooch and i'm just in floods you know absolutely oh my goodness yeah, yeah. Animals, we can't we can't do it can we yeah well, let's switch up gears a little bit. What if I wanted to have you put on an event? What what would somebody do to get an event from you? Specifically oh, well, yeah, from yeah, you, but it yeah. could be anybody, but let's oh, talk yeah, about you yeah, because I'm, you're here. <laughs> I'm here, yeah. So yeah, and the thing for me is increasingly my my sort of motto for this year, and I sort of New Year's resolution maybe is a bit strong, but I really want to be more collaborative. And that's sort of something I've really set out as like a target this year working with a lot more people on events and um honestly if anyone's interested in sort of trying to do something just just drop me an email and i think you know everyone i find sometimes people kind of need a bit of there's like certain things they're like really confident in and other things they think oh actually how do i sort of do that um so mm-hmm. i might be like i know a bunch of people who want to do a thing we could do sort of a bunch of workshops or some panels and that'd be great but you may not kind of have the, the full sort of confidence or knowledge in some of the marketing stuff or the kind of or the admin bit of it you know selling tickets and the, the financial side of things so that's kind of where i can come in on a lot of things really and that's to me that's really fascinating because i i sort of have things i i mean, i'm always thinking sort of trying to conjure up new ideas but people often pop up and i think oh, what a great idea like why didn't i think of that and i kind of kick myself but you know you, you get to work with them anyway which is great i've got an event coming up on saturday um which is all about um uh, witches and witchcraft and it is kind of like how to write it authentically so there's like authors oh, of there, as well as kind of uh experts in the field and practitioners and i thought like i would never have thought of it it's just a brilliant 
idea is fantastic yeah um so yeah if anyone i'd say pop me pop me an email find me on twitter i'm at uh, at alex davis 1981 um yeah do do just feel free to, to get in touch i'm always very much up for kind of collaborations and i think that's where so much exciting stuff happens you know you're sort of forging new connections and you're sort of taking events in new directions and um i think i had a bad habit of playing on a lone furrow that that was for me was like a long time i think i'm trying to let go of that and i suppose a lot of event organizers will have this they have this kind of like slight kind of control freak mentality it's like and i would like my old boss uh, where i used to do a lot of my events said to me like if you like get hit by a bus the day before your event no one's gonna know what's happening it's like you is all in your <laughs> shit. I, I know, I know. I'll try my best not to get hit by a bus, but uh, obviously, but, um, <laughs> that's not in my plan. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not in my plan. But, it's not in the schedule, yeah, so it's, it's like not in the happens. schedule. Yeah, it's not in the timeline. <laughs> um, but no, it, it was. It's, it is true. And I did think that actually, I need to be a bit more, you know, sort of a bit more collaborative and work with people, and they can sort of lighten the load on me and they're again bringing their take and their skills and that's been it's been really exciting i must admit it did take a bit to let go i think that that was the thing for me but um, yeah it's enabled me to a lot to do a lot more stuff there's a lot of kind of really exciting stuff on the horizon a huge amount of that has just been by kind of being a bit more open and saying oh hey you know sometimes sometimes people come to me or i'll go to someone and say oh hey can we do this thing and that's really um yeah you just bring new elements to the table and you're sort of tapping into we're both tapping into new audiences, you know, they're tapping into the audience that I have and vice versa. Uh, you pull all your resources, you pull all your contacts, you pull all your social yeah. media. It's, um, yeah, it's been Yeah, tremendous. that's actually, this is collaborative. You're Absolutely. Right. <laughs> exactly that, exactly that, but definitely. And I think that's the thing to me that's, I'm finding, and I sort of, I don't want to sort of kick myself what I've done before, but I do think there's a lot more exciting stuff kind of happening um, on the back of that. Uh, I think that's just, yeah. it was the time it happened. I don't think I could have done it sort of 10 years ago. I think I was still in my proper control freak like zone, um, and I, the thing, the thing that's great for me doing the physical events is I've got like a volunteer team who've worked with me a lot of times, and oh, the thing that's, that's awesome. great uh, and is a big shout out to all them is like they just know how I do things. I can absolutely kind of I can just turn up and say, "Is this done?" They go, "We did that ten minutes ago." Right? I just don't have to worry. <laughs> they just get like my brain. The working my brain is kind of second nature. Uh, yeah. To so that's uh, that's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, all those links are in the description if you're watching this video right now. Um, so if you need to book Alex or you just want to find out about some events, do you have like a like a newsletter or anything where people can find out what events are coming up? Because I would love to check the witchcraft one that you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. We, yeah, no, definitely. We have an event right page which is the main kind of port of call for, uh, for everything. You can follow that page okay. and you'll sort of get a, a little notification when the next events are on the horizon. Uh, yeah, so I will, I'll give you that link to put in the chat as, uh, as well. If you just look up Alex Davis events on Eventbrite, you'll, you'll find us or you just type in Alex Davis events. You'll probably find us that way. Um, at large, but yeah, plenty, plenty on the horizon, probably, probably busier than ever, uh, on, on the online front as well as some of the physical, um stuff as well and again that's that's great I'm, I'm buzzing about sort of what's on the horizon i've got a lot of new things um coming up particularly please i'm doing an in-person ray bradbury day that's one of my absolute like that's oh, one awesome. of the dream events i've always wanted to do so i'm so chuffed to bits for that um yeah got some fantastic uh online stuff coming up um into november and into next year even it's quite a rare situation to be sort of thinking i've got stuff booked into april that's quite you know, it's a long way ahead for me to be to be working, which is lovely as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah if we check out Alex Davis events, that's where we are. And uh, lots of kind of one off workshops. We've got some longer courses. Um, we have full day events. We've got the third Darkness in the Fields Folk Horror Day. So there's a lot of kind of yeah variety. If you want something a bit bite sized, we've got something there. If you want something a bit more substantial, we've got that too. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to start. I'm going to go and I'm going to start sharing you in my opportunities newsletter because I'm always looking for things like that to share. You know, this is happening this weekend. You know, you can go do this, this, this if you're bored, you know, but that's only again because we've kind of moved online a lot. Yeah. Um, so oh, yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely yeah. Opened up. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And it's, again, it's, as I say, it's so lovely. We do get, we do literally get, you know, and one of the things I love about it personally, you get authors from all over the world. Like I say, we talk about the ghost story festivals, like, I could never have thought I can bring Angela over to the UK for, yes. for a thing. But actually, again, that's yeah. one of the things I've loved is I've, I've had the opportunity yeah. to work with so many authors in Australia and Europe and the US and mm -hmm. Canada. It's, that's like so thrilling to be able to, to be able to do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I those, think the those... authors like that too, because we can't, you know, oh, I mean, yeah. oh yeah, sure. I'll just book that 
flight and yeah. go oh, over there. Yeah. It, 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 it has, I mean, I have done it a few times, but it, it's a lot, mm. it's a lot more logistics, a lot more forethought, and you have to have everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, it's more cost involved all around, so there's all that to factor in. And sometimes the stars align and sometimes they don't. I think, you know, but it's safer online. It's as long as you figure out the time zones, which can be mm. uh, the, the bane of my existence. Um, <laughs> yeah. The first Winter Horns event last year, we had authors from um, Australia, Canada, and then all over the US as well. So we were sort of, I was trying to collaborate. So, um, we, I remember your panel was sort of saying things like, so everyone's in a slightly different part of. <laughs> the country yes. and um i say you know it, it's a real i was all day think just emailing people saying right you're on an hour is that okay i just kind of checking you know the time so uh, that's me being a control freak once again but uh, oh that is i we're getting ready to do that again that's what i do for this show a lot and i've yeah, got course, the same group yeah. so it's singapore new zealand australia uk and the us and now brazil wow we have to coordinate, so that'll be yeah. that'll be fun. Yeah, it's it's some task, yeah. but if, where there's a will, there's so a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be done. Unfortunately, there's be been done. there's better tools now too that I found a couple of cheat links. I'll share them with you. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah honestly, I'm always I'm always trying to figure out. So whereabouts are you, and whereabouts am I? And, yeah. Um, then I mean, uh, you'll know as well. The clocks go back and forwards, and it's like, oh no, what are we doing now? Oh so, yeah, <laughs> my distance is, is that spring forward, fall back. Yeah. Like daylight. Oh, okay. That could be another show, but that would be boring because I would just be. Yeah, probably not. Not that's a niche interest, I think. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but tell me, can you think of a particular event? I'm going to say negative or positive, like something that was horrifying to you, or something really positive or funny. What is, what's something that really stands out in your mind from all the times that you've done this, in, in person or like maybe a highlight, a thrilling moment? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, I think for me, the thing I always love is just, I'm sure any event organizer will say this, just generally just seeing it come to life is like you you work so long on something that has this life on sort of paper uh, and nothing else. And as you get there on the day and you've got all these people there and they're absolutely buzzing. And one of the things I do love kind of happens afterwards, actually. I've got a lot of emails after events saying, you know, six months afterwards or a year after. So, oh, God, I wanted to say thanks. I met my like current publisher. At your events, I, like, I don't think this would have happened without going to your event. Those things you sort of think, well, that's yeah. your sort of tangible impact on the industry in a way. That's what you're sort of um, when, when you decide to hang up your event organizing boots. That's what you're sort of leaving behind you. Um, I mean, there's a, there's some absolutely. I mean, some of the speakers out there are absolutely phenomenal. I have a long abiding memory of um, Joe Hill coming over to the UK, and he did an event with us and. He did a sort of hot was it wasn't even a harmonica it was sort of a, a like a band and he got people up to play the harmonica with a kazoo it was a kazoo orchestra i'm just trying to recall the precise details um and there's like all these people who are just like beaming ear to ear just like playing kazoo on stage with joe hill it's like you know these there's these all these kind of little moments you think these this is so yeah. sort of surreal you know sort of thing how did i and i do think it's i'm not much one to get starstruck but you sometimes think like how did i get here you know um sort of when one of my very first events must have been the second one i did it was out for dinner like someone said oh can i have dinner with us it'd be great and sort of i didn't really know who was going i ended up sat down at the table with john gerald who's a big sf agent over here ian banks and, and harry harrison i sort of thought what am i doing here like, I, I, I should not be at this table this is like one of these things is not quite like the other you know um yeah. Yeah, but I think that's one of the things. That, but the other thing I love, and, and I would say this to anyone who wants to put an event on, is like, don't be like afraid of authors. And I hope, you know, if you've been to an event, you probably know that already. But um, you know, most authors are so like uh, good natured and helpful. And will just, you know, they love doing these things. They love being out there. Uh, they love being kind of w w with their people, you know, their audience and their fellow writers and their readers. And, um, you know, just it's always such a great vibe just because any event, just people are loving being in that environment uh, sometimes i do sometimes say to people, like i don't you know under no illusions probably a lot of people here just to hang out <laughs> they just bought mm -hmm. a ticket they're just hanging out they're not even looking at the program that much or they're not you know they might go to one or two yeah. things they're not going to be hardcore all day going to stuff but um that's one of the things i love is just you, the ambience and the atmosphere that you get i think is 
um, is absolutely fabulous. Um, That's awesome. Trying to think of some negative. I'm trying to think of some negative ones. Probably the, one of the ones that I, I, I sort of look back and laugh um, is that um, we had programmed the well, I think it must have been FancyCon that I ran in Scarborough, chair, should I say, in Scarborough, and we had advertised a bingo. We were doing like a book bingo. It's got a big, big thing in British seaside towns is bingo. So there we were, and um, said to my deputy, "Oh, we've got the uh, we've got the bingo cards." She said, what bingo? I thought you were buying the bingo cards. I said, no, I thought you were buying the bingo cards. It was like 10 minutes before bingo's due. So I went to go to the hotel uh, yeah, front desk. Said, have you got any spare bingo? Like, I know you do a lot of bingo. Have you got any spare bingo cards? I can't give you our bingo cards. And someone pops up about five minutes later and says, we have these old ones. Like, they will be fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> They'll be great. So we're playing with these sort of out-of-date bingo cards. Honestly, and it's again, it's the sort of thing you, you look back and laugh, and I don't think it really yeah. makes sense to the audience. But, yeah, you always... I think the thing is, there's always if you're willing to be a bit creative, there's always mm -hmm. some kind of solution to things, you know. Well, you yeah, it, so, yeah. And yeah. probably somebody got their vintage bingo card and was like, "Oh, how cool that they went through yeah, all that trouble absolutely. to get vintage." Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. from twenty years yeah. ago. Or how like them at the seaside in the seventies. It's great, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're, you know, I wouldn't call it a negative. I just, I think mostly it's just those little sort of stories where you think well that sort of nearly went wrong but we kind of muddled through and i think that's it so much of yeah again that's the, the spirit of the event again if you get the the right team and everyone sort of pulls together you know it's uh yeah, yeah. It's, it can all can all work out regardless i think so excellent <laughs> well how about because we are almost out of time this has been like it's gone so fast oh, my word, uh, yes, how is. about you like what about you like what are you doing personally as a creative besides events who, what is Alex Davis doing? Do you have anything special, like a project or anything like that that you want to talk about? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm currently curious. Um, yeah, no, no, at least, at least, no. The current sort of writing project is. Um, I, I'm not sure I could say too much about it. Actually, it's um, it's yeah. uh, so I'm writing a fresh course for somebody. <laughs> That's what I'll say for the time being. Uh, but it's a sort of handbook that goes along with a course that I'll be um, hopefully kicking off. That's the thing that's taking up the writing time at present. I've had a lot of fun with that. Actually, I must admit, it's um sort of the, the fiction's a little bit back burner but i'm having a great fun sort of time um putting together everything there so i'm sort of not uh i feel like i'm missing the the short stories and the novels too much at the minute i'm sure that uh yeah. feeling will come back again um at some stage i'm um sort of doing a phd at the minute as well i find it a bit a bit of a challenge i would admit but i think it's something that hopefully will all come together um in the end so a lot of reading going on um as well as we speak a lot of reading and research and uh that's eating up the time as well so um, perhaps not quite as creative as i would like but still still busy uh in the uh, in the patch uh that's for sure yeah i think i'm just gonna say i think that organizing is as much of a creative art as any creative art um as somebody who looks at at spreadsheets and and I do use them, I have to use them. But when I first started, I remember kind of going, "Well, what do I do with this? This is like giving me a lump of clay in a potter's wheel and saying, create a vase. Mm. I don't know what to do with this. So it's yeah, I think yeah, I'm and, and it is creative. Yeah, I, I suppose so. And I think the thing, as I say, I think if anyone wants to give it a go, so I think if you just as long as you're not taking a huge risk on anything, why not get stuck into it? You may, you know, that first time around, you may make mistakes. I look back at my first things and I sort of, you know, I was, I was probably about 23 when I organized my first convention. I sort of think, God, that's like, I look back and I'm so young to be doing something like it. And I probably made all kinds of, sort of small errors on route, but it all seemed to work out okay. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just to get stuck into it, give it a whirl. So I think as long as you're not exposing yourself to a whole bunch of risk and sort of putting, mm -hmm. you know, putting up the, your, your mortgage on your house to go and do the event. God, don't, don't do that in the that least. Um, just, yeah, but um, I do think... You you always learn as you. I'm still learning now. I would never. I would never sort of say that I'd sort of. I've I've figured out events. You know, you're always learning different ways to do things, and also just because the landscape is always changing. With the, say the online events is the perfect example, but social media is always changing. The way you market things is continually changing. The authors kind of scene is constantly changing. There's always like new authors bursting on the scene. You think, oh, I really want to work with that person, and how exciting that is. Um, new partnerships you can make. So things are always. Things are always changing. Things are always in flux. I think that's it's partly is what makes it exciting. But like you, you're you're always learning. I think however long you do yeah. it, you'll always be you'll find something new every time you do an event. I think. Yeah. Well, that's 
that's a really good attitude. I think in probably anything is to just always kind of be fresh and be open to things change and there's there's new challenges. I'm actually, I'm just curious, what was that first event? Do you remember? Yeah, very much. So it was an event I did way back in the day called, it was Alt Fiction, A-L-T dot fiction. Um, and I was working at Derby City Council, in fact, and uh, as literature officer. And I pitched this to my line manager thinking my line manager is going to kind of say, you can't do that. He was like, yeah, great, go for it. I was like, fantastic. Um, and I was just literally emailing authors kind of absolute cold call. And the thing that struck me then was how many people were like, oh, hey, if you ask this person, there's like people were really like, supportive of one another and wanting to help and like really wanting to kind of um, help this thing happen, which was awesome. Um, I think we probably had about 150 for that, which is not a bad start oh, for the first wow. time doing something. And uh, At 23, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, no, it, was lovely, it was a lovely lineup and uh, great to get all the volunteers really got stuck into it. And um, that was a real, it was such a buzz. And I still get a buzz now, absolutely still do very much get, but I can't maybe kind of run the miles that I used to back that long ago. But um, I do, um, you know, it was... Um, it was very nerve wracking. I still, and again, I still get nervous now. I'd say that to anyone, you know, don't sort of let the nerves put you off. You know, they will be there. And, uh, you know, I'd love to say that gets better in time. It doesn't always, <laughs> for, it depends what it is as well. But um, yeah, it was a real, and it was, I think I look back thinking like I had never done that before. And certainly never anything on that scale. So it was a bit of a, yeah. uh, but it was just, and I think that was the thing I'd say, again, it's kind of early on. I was very, very like meticulous and very like this happens then. And, I think now I sort of have a bit of an idea of like a general flow and a flow of an event. So I maybe less kind of pin everything down to the nth degree as I did for that very first event. I was very like precise, like this happens then and this happens then and on this date, this happens. And it's probably the way that I've sort of modeled my way through it really. But um, I think it was largely down to the community, you know, you, you know, where, where you are and in the U S and Australia and the UK, there's always yeah. a great scene of um, horror writers and sci-fi writers, genre writers as a whole. Um, that really, yeah, it always, it really touched me how people kind of wanted to get behind it um mm. from the get-go and as i've always found that since people just love to see things happening and um yeah. yeah and it means a lot again to do your bit to support other people of course but uh yeah it was particular that one i was like, I'm just this kind of kid kind of trying to come onto the scene and do something it was just yeah it was lovely the way that people did get behind it yeah especially i think at 23 i was probably trying to gather beer money that was probably my organizational <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah. Um, it was. Yeah, that was. It was. It was. It was. Something I'd, again, something even that I'd always wanted to do. And um, yeah, yeah was, um, I'm not 23, 24. I can't remember precisely. It was, it was definitely yeah, sort of somewhere in that territory. So um, yeah, I've been been doing this kind of thing for sort of nearly twenty years. So it's um, wow. Well, yeah, and hopefully many more to come. <laughs> yes. Well, I thank you for doing this because it is kind of like the unsung hero in the background. And think of how many spouses and friends that you are saving that from, from writers, because we always want to talk about writer stuff. You know, the books we've read, the books we're writing, you know, what we've heard in the industry. And if you're not in that mindset, if you're not a writer, it does, I understand, I don't get it, but I understand it can be a little boring, probably. Mm. I mean, <laughs> I really don't understand, but uh, so just think of all the all the the best friends that are not writers, you know, best friends of writers that are like, Yes, thank you. Go to the event, and then <laughs> Go to that. we can talk about shopping again, or something. yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what other, what, whatever other people talk about. Of course, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Well, what do people talk about beyond writing? I don't know. Yeah, From... I don't know, but I know there's something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for being on the show, Alex, um, and thank you for all that you're doing. Oh, and you. for anybody who's interested in contacting Alex to attend an event or to ask him about organizing event to, to, to see about orga organizing your own event. Um, links are in the description. Right. Thanks so much, Angela. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week, everybody. <laughs>